constantly living in a cycle of being like, do you want some moisture? Not too much moisture. Okay, how about a little bit more moisture? Okay, that was too much moisture. Hello, welcome back. You know, there's not gonna be any kind of exceptional circumstances in this video, except for the fact that there are still trucks, yes, two years later, making noise outside my back window. Today we're just gonna do a regular old fashioned empties video. We're gonna go through my beauty trash. And I always quote Leanne, it's paraphrasing Leanne, favorites are great and everything, but empties are how you know when you really know how you feel about a product, whether you loved it or you hated it, you finished it, and whether or not you're going to repurchase it or like say goodbye forever. So I've got the most random bag ever here. And honestly, the thing that I don't know about is where the Thrive Mascaras and the Glossier Boy Brows go. Because I know I've been through quite a few of them and I think I absentmindedly just toss them when I'm done and I don't think to put them in my empties and I don't know why. So uh, just imagine a lot of those in here and then we're also going to go through some hair products, some body products, some makeup, some all sorts of stuff. So if you enjoy these kinds, I personally love empties videos. So I hope that you guys do too. Let's go ahead and jump in. <laughs> if you're like Kaki, uh, your hair is a little contrived today. Yeah, it is. I'm in desperate need of a trim right now and there's really nothing I can do about that at the moment. Speaking of hair, the first thing I wanna talk about is this. Oh yes, she's making her debut in my beauty trash videos. So this is the Orbe Dry Texturizing Spray. And speaking of Leanne, I was hashtag influenced by Leanne to buy this and I have no regards. This is a $46? texturizing spray. If any of you are familiar with Orbe, you know that they really think that their stuff is dipped in gold. So uh, in some cases they're right. I haven't tried a whole lot of Orbe products unless I have had them like sampled. I, this is the only one I've ever bought, but I've already repurchased it. It's just that good. And I'm a big fan of texturizing sprays just because I don't have a lot of volume on my own. And when I do manage to build some volume, I want to hold on to it, okay? And this actually really helps. It's also a eh, kind of like a dry shampoo. Not really. And I certainly wouldn't use it in the amounts that you would typically use a dry shampoo because it's very precious. So buy a less expensive dry shampoo, use that. This is just very much for like first and second day hair to just re oomph everything and make it hold the volume. And as expensive as this hair product is and as spoiled as I am. Being a hairstylist and not having to pay full price for hair products in most cases, we'll get to some of those in a second. I pay full price for this because Orbe does not participate with any kind of beauty supplies that are open to cosmetologists to, you know, get the you know, at cost price. No, <laughs> you have to be like an Orbe salon to do that kind of thing. So I do pay full price for this and I will continue to pay full price for this. Next, a much less expensive texture spray, but I swear by both of them. This is by Verb. Verb was actually started at Bird's Barbershop where I used to work. They still use all the Verb products, even though Verb has been sold to Moroccan oil years ago. And so it helped them to really expand the brand. It's everywhere. It's in Sephora, it's at Target, it's online, it's everywhere. And they're very, very good products. I mean, I tried the first lab sample of their like texturizing product for men's hair, like way back in the day, back in what, 2009, 2010, something like that. But they've come a long way. I love a lot of their products. I like their shampoo, I like their ghost oil, but this one is absolutely my favorite. This is the Verb C Texture Spray, light hold and dry volume and weightless grit. And it is so good. Like if you are not gonna spring for the Orbe, this, it's not the same, but it's equally good. You know, it does something a little bit different in the sense that it does make your hair a little bit grittier. It kind of takes a little bit of the shine away. And I would say that, I don't know, I think that that's kind of the trade-off <laughs> when you have really fine hair and you need to sort of build those funny little bonds in between your hairs to make them stay apart from each other if that makes sense. And a lot of times that means spraying like microfiber and like grit into your hair. That toothiness tends to kind of be the trade-off for shine, but that's really, really good for people who are kind of going for a little bit more of like a rough beachy texture. Beachy hair is not necessarily like one and the same with shine. So I've never particularly had shiny hair, so I don't feel like I'm really losing out that much, but this definitely uh, gives you that amazing, like super, almost like one day dirty, but in like no oily way at all. And it's awesome. And both of these smell really nice. This one smells super like soapy and clean. And that one smells kind of like 
unisex perfumey, but not as bad as something like the, um, the R and Co products. <gasps> Oh, I've returned those. I like never return hair products. I'm always like, well, I can figure out how to make this work. I returned a few R and Co products because the smells, I always say this, but the company is really overestimating its right to decide how I smell today. I don't think that my hair product needs to decide how I smell today. I want to decide how I smell today. And so I think that uh, R and Co needs to dial that back. Plus I'm just really sensitive to fragrances just on my skin. Definitely will repurchase. I can't go to my beauty supply right now. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I thought that the lid was on this, but I guess it isn't. Oh no. How did you do this, Khaki? You are so dumb sometimes. Wow. Okay, so that was stupid. This is the Function and Beauty hair mask. Can you not? It is, I think, customized. All of the Function and Beauty stuff is customized. So I assume this is too, but like I also got their hair serum and I don't know if that one's customized necessarily. Anyway, I got this because they rolled out a bunch of new stuff. I have infinite, infinite credit on Function of Beauty. It was my first ever aff affiliate referral partnership. And in the beginning, instead of all the sponsored videos that you guys are seeing now from like really big influencers who are talking about Function of Beauty, they're probably getting paid lump sums to do those videos. I've never been paid to talk about Function of Beauty, but I was one of the first people to review it. One of my viewers was like, can you please do this? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I was contacted by them br like briefly thereafter. And they said, hey, our referral program for influencers for like ambassadors, is to just have unlimited referral credit. <laughs> and so most people kind of topped out at like five referrals. I was able to give people $5 off and I think I got like $10 in credit every time I referred somebody. And it's just been going on for years. I have over a thousand dollars in referral dollars that I, you know, obviously can't use for anything else except my own shampoo needs. And so every time they come out with something new, I just try it. And anytime I am like low on shampoo or another type of shampoo that I'm kind of trying out that I'm not sure whether I want to repurchase yet or whatever, I always have backups of function of beauty. And it is a very good shampoo and conditioner situation, but Somehow it's like still never my first choice. I feel like it's just more to do in the shower than Aquas, but it does clean a little bit better than Aquas, but it does dry my hair out a little bit more than other things that I've tried. I want to try Way, but I want to smell it first because it might be really strongly fragranced. I want to try Orbe, but I want to smell it first. And we're just like not in a place right now where we can go and have the luxury of smelling things first. So. I did, however, just order the new whole drunk elephant line with the exception of the scalp scrub. I don't really need a scalp scrub, but I got, I even got the deodorant. So I'm gonna have a full report on that and those are unscented. So I'm really pumped about that. So I don't know if I would repurchase this just because it didn't really make that big of a difference in my life. And it did still kind of break my neck out. Anything that's like super emollient, even though I did order this without any fragrance and without any color to it, it's still, breaks my neck out a little bit. So yeah, I don't know, on the fence here. Another hair product, oh no, there is literally conditioner all over everything. What have I done? If you've watched any of my empties before, I pretty much all of these hair products with the exception of the Orbe is like not a surprise to you. This is Kenra Volume Spray. This is a holdover, like not this bottle, but this product is a holdover from me being a hairstylist because it is the best hairspray ever, especially if you have really fine hair. For coarser hair, heavier hair, it might not be as like miraculous, but if you've got that just kind of like fibrous hair like I do, that's just kind of like angel feathers, this, you could hold your hair straight up and spray it with this and it would hold it straight up. And then, not that I recommend this, but if you really came down to it, if you wanted to, you could wait for it to dry, comb it, and it would go back flat. It is the most amazing updo hairspray. It's incredible. You can handle it when it's about three quarters dry and kind of get these really good stronghold sculpted moments out of your hair. They do have several of these and basically the, you know, medium hold ones are going to be a little bit oilier and a little, you know, obviously less hold, but they're going to add more sheen. Whereas something like this, this is just like hold, hold, hold. I've always been a fan of a firm hold hairspray. And if you don't want it to be as strong, hold it really far away from your head and just get like, a wider dispersion of it. Okay, 
Amika. I will say Amika is a brand that I always wanted to try anyway, just because I have heard such great things about them. I do love a lot of their products. This is actually the second time that I bought this. I really, really liked it the first time. And it is the Amika The Cure Intense Repair Mask. And it's very, very good for that. However, the problem with this is that it is so strongly scented. And I'm not sure if that's what breaks me out, but there's something in this that, I mean, instantly gives me cystic acne. I almost regret doing the whole clean beauty thing because I think that I like spoiled my skin in a sense, because now my neck and my back break out and they never did before. I have no idea what I did to like change my microbiome, but I did and this doesn't work for me anymore. And so it's very, very sad. And I do recommend Amika products. I think that they are lovely and they do absolutely do what they say they're going to do, but they're just so heavily fragranced that this didn't work for me and I will not be repurchasing it. Speaking of Amika, I have two of these and I buy them two at a time. This is the Amika Perk Up Dry Shampoo. These are both empty. This is my favorite dry shampoo. I am not gonna tell you that it doesn't leave a white cast on your hair. It kinda does, but it combs out and it's nothing like Batiste or something like that. And I should say, I should mention, Amika is a brand that I can get at my beauty supply at cost. So, you know, these are probably like 20 something dollars. I get them for like 12 and that's a great deal as far as I'm concerned. Brands really charge a lot for dry shampoo. Like even Batiste is kind of expensive for a drugstore product. So this is also something that maybe I can get a little bit. I can't get any of it out of there, but I can still smell it. It's a lovely, lovely smell. It's just like a really feminine flowery kind of smell. This doesn't break me out, I guess, just because it doesn't, I don't know, maybe it just doesn't have as many emollient, any emollient qualities to it. I genuinely don't know the science of what's breaking my skin out. It might be the fragrance. It might be like a common ingredient in like hair masks, but either way, this doesn't break me out and I will continue buying these more in the future when, if ever, my salon beauty supply ever reopens. <laughs> I also guys, <laughs> you may have seen it on my Instagram, but I wanted you guys to know I did finally pull the trigger and there, it will be a video. The video is coming. These are in the danger zone. They're in the danger zone of maybe starting to lift. So I get dip nails. You guys always ask me about my nails. This is dip powder. And when they grow out for too long, then I never let them get to this point, but they'll start to kind of lift just a little bit. And if, if like your hair gets under it or something like that, you can risk really breaking your nail pretty badly just because you're kind of losing that leverage of it being like at the very root of your cuticle. Sorry, I'm not trying to flip you off. But I ordered a set on Amazon, several things, to do my own dip nails, and it's going to be, I think it'll, I think it's gonna go well. I think I know what I'm doing. I think it's going to be insanely time consuming, like charge multiple batteries, overhead rig, major time lapse, but I think I'm gonna be able to do it, and if I can, it's gonna be really, really fun. If not, I'm really not that bummed about it. Like, if I have to chop my nails down, that's fine. It'll take like a month to grow them back out once all of the smoke has cleared on this, but I do. I'm obsessed with my nails. I have always, always, always in my life wanted long nails. I wish that there was an equivalent of dip powder for your hair to make your hair strong enough that it can grow really long because I finally found a product that makes my nails strong enough to grow really long and they make me so happy. They're just so pretty and I, think that like it's one of my <laughs> saddest things that I haven't been able to go and get them done because it's actually a ritual I really enjoy treating myself to. So look forward to that possible disaster of a video. Oh, there's conditioner all over this. That was brilliant. Now I'm gonna have it on my face. There's a lot of hair products in here. That's probably the thing I finish the most because it's the thing that I buy the least. Okay, these came as a set. We have the Brio Gio Scalp Revival Charcoal and Coconut Oil Micro Exfoliating Shampoo and the Don't Despair Repair Deep Conditioning Mask. I didn't, I feel this, I didn't actually finish this because it also breaks me out. All the deep conditioning masks break me out. Even Brio Gio, they, they are scented, if lightly scented. The Clean at Sephora regulations are not anti-fragrance, they just limit the amount that can be in there. But 
I really enjoyed the charcoal and coconut oil. The aqueous shampoo system that I tend to use, it just doesn't get your hair squeaky squeaky clean. They did recently, and I think it's because they're responding to customers saying that, come out with a weekly treatment that is like a deep clean for your hair. And I was like, that's actually pretty brilliant. I might try that. But this was a really, really good substitute for that to just make sure that I get all the product off my scalp and everything like that. So this is, it's an interesting concept, right? Charcoal micro exfoliating shampoo, and it doesn't do anything crazy that's gonna like break your hair and it's minty. It's actually quite lovely. And for people who have scalp buildup, I can't recommend this enough. So yeah, I probably would repurchase this if I had those issues again, but I will not be repurchasing this just because it's just too emollient, unfortunately. That's why my hair so stinking dry is because no, I can't put any hair masks on my hair because I'll just get like cysts all over my neck. It's great. So speaking of Aquas, here is the number one and the number two treatment. So if you're unfamiliar with Aquas, it is a treatment that is designed to keep your hair wet for as little time as possible. So you spray on this number one water defense pre-wash and this is the number two rebalancing hair wash. I did a sponsored video when I first tried this and I have been buying it ever since. They've gotten far more money from me than I ever got from them. It's actually kind of hilarious, but I love this, I really do. It is the quickest way in the shower. Like you spray this on before you get in and by the time you've gotten yourself all lathered up, you wait till the end of your shower to even wet your hair and wash it. And then by the end of your shower, like it takes so much less time. And then the step, Three, I almost said four. The step three is the uh, quick drying towel, you know, little turban guy. And, uh, and after that, it is a number four kind of rebalancing leave-in conditioner spray, like pH balances your hair. My hair loves it. It doesn't break me out. It is lightly, lightly scented. I do really, really like it. But like I said, it has a tendency not to get my hair as completely squeaky clean every single time over time, especially if I am wearing a lot of products. So I'm thinking about trying their weekly, but as you guys can see, I am on so many fences about hair products, especially like shampoo and conditioner. Styling products, sure, load me up. But when it comes to shampoo and conditioner, I just have so many dumb little issues with my hair and with my scalp and with my skin and with just all of my preferences and my skin's little nitpicky things that I have several in circulation at any given time. And I do finish them all. I do actually wash my hair really often, which is also not that great, but at the same time, I live in Texas. I sweat a lot. We all sweat a lot. It's gross. So I probably will repurchase these. That doesn't mean that they are that we're in an exclusive relationship. I have conditioner like all over everything, just all over everything, all over everything. I will be thoroughly conditioned. Is that it for hair products? Oh, nope, we got one more. Uh, so function of khaki, function of beauty. What was this? I guess it's the shampoo. And you can see I bought it, no fragrance, no color to it because I wanted it to be non-irritating and it's good. It just does dry my hair out a little bit more than I would like. I'm just a really nitpicky Goldilocks about my hair, okay? Alrighty, let's move into some other things that aren't hair care oriented. Let's talk about shaving stuff. So you guys know I have started using Flamingo recently and I worked my way through this really quickly. This was the little mini shave gel and I already have the large shave gel. I was gonna save this to mention in my favorites. I'll probably mention it again, but in light of all of this stuff that's going on and the fact that everybody's just kind of a mobile right now, my representative, like my contact at Flamingo reached out to me a few days ago and she was like, hey, can we send you some stuff? I bet you're out of razor blades. And I was like, I am, thank you. Like, how nice is that? Didn't want anything in return, just wanted to make sure I was taken care of. I was just like, y'all are so nice. And so they're just sending me some freaking razor blades and probably some more shaving cream. Just so freaking nice. So yeah, I really can't say enough about this great product because I freaking love this shave gel, but also the company in general. I just have had such a lovely experience with them. Oh, and then this, <laughs> A long time ago when I did a clean out of my bathroom cabinet underneath my sink, I found probably like a stockpile of like six of these in various degrees of either use or being brand new. And since then I've just been trying to work my way through all the Barbasols and it's been years. So yeah, just, you know, one more down for the count, throw that in the recycler. Oh, so if my hair journey has been annoying, I would say that my body care journey has been 
maybe more annoying just because I have, I don't know if it's KP, keratosis pilaris. A lot of people have said that it is, but the, the keratosis pilaris that I see is very dense. It looks like chicken skin. Mine's not like that. I have these little bumps that you can just take your nail and go think, and you just like pull a little hard thing out of. And there are dozens of them, yes, but not really close to each other. I would say that there are, you know, maybe a, a few dozen on my back, not like this overall skin texture. I don't have it on my arms. I don't have it on my cheeks the way a lot of people do. And it doesn't make my skin red or irritated looking or look like I have kind of uh, blood vessels close to the, the, the surface of the skin the way that a lot of KP does. And so I don't know what it is, but I have yet to find a body care like regimen that alleviates it. And it all started when I was like starting my clean beauty journey. When I was using Bath and Body Works, Okay, which I did for a very long time. I still like Bath and Body Works, even though they're not cruelty free. It makes me sad, I don't shop there anymore, but like, I still like the way their stuff smells. When I was using that stuff with all of its ammonium laurel sulfate and sodium laurel sulfate and all the fragrances and all the nonsense, my skin was fine. Granted, it was dry, but it was definitely not breaking out. I've never in my life had acne on my back and on my neck, and now I do. So all of these are kind of fails in that respect. So I tried this whole really, really gentle line called Ceramedics, and this is the Extra Gentle Body Cleanser, which basically, it feels like you're rubbing yogurt on your body in the shower. There's no emulsification, there's no sudsing, and honestly, it felt odd, and I'm not sure that it really did anything, and I won't be repurchasing that. This is the Ceramedics Restoring Body Lotion. Fine. It's basically supposed to be the cruelty-free equivalent and paraben-free equivalent of CeraVe. CeraVe has, thank you to Claire, one of my followers, so funny on Instagram, we were messaging each other, and I said something about like CeraVe having parabens in it. She goes, my CeraVe doesn't have parabens in it. And we literally sent each other pictures of the labels on both of our exact same product. I had bought mine at Costco and she had bought hers at like the grocery store or Target or something. I think that they were like liquidating the old formula and that was what I ended up buying at Costco so cheaply. And it's because they were getting rid of all of their, their paraben uh, products. And then she had one that had phenoxyethanol in it. And so they have switched over, but they are still not, to my knowledge, cruelty-free. I don't think, they say on their website that they are, but like their parent company, I don't know. Anyway, I went for this instead to just try and be on the up and up. Still not a fan. And honestly, CeraVe wasn't miraculous either. It's fine, but like A, it felt just really clinical and sad because there's no fragrance to it. There's no experience to it. There's no nothing to it. And B, it still gave me it gave me no relief, I should say, from like that texture and weird kind of bump situation that I keep having. Here's another, I think this is the body wash. Yeah, this is the Fleur Hanami body wash. Beautiful, love the way that this stuff smells, but I go through it so fast. And I just have other things that I'm working my way through right now. In fact, there is something that is technically an empty that I loved, but I don't have it in my hands because it's zero waste at the end of the day. I mean, granted it comes in packaging, but like it's a bar of soap. It is the, Good Molecules Body Bar, and it's actually soap-free, it's, but it's hard to talk about it without calling it soap because it's a bar of non-soap. And it's got salicylic acid in it. You can use it, you know, to wash your face in the shower if you want to. I've been using it on like my whole body and my shoulders and everything. And I use it after I get done with my conditioner. So I will wash all my conditioner out, tie my hair up, and then I wash that area that tends to break out again with that body bar from Good Molecules and it has really taken the breakouts down a notch. And I'm very, very happy about that. And I think that it's just about getting that stuff off of my skin and replacing it with something that has good potent ingredients in it. It's an $8 body bar. They sent me the first one because I'm on their PR list. God bless them. It's one of my favorite PR lists. I love Good Molecules. I will definitely be repurchasing that particular body bar, probably like three at a time. So I liked this, it's fine, but it didn't really do anything one way or the other for my actual skin situation. And the Good Molecules body bar absolutely did. And I like, I miss it and I'm gonna order it again. And then here was the final uh, part of that set from Ceramedics. This is the Natural Ceramide Therapy Ultra Moisturizing Cream. Oh my gosh, did this make my my breakouts worse oh my gosh it's hilarious isn't it isn't it so funny how my skin and my hair and my whole body needs moisture all the time except that as soon as I put it on it breaks me out like crazy 
I know. Don't you want to be me? Yeah, so I am. I'm constantly living in a cycle of being like, do you want some moisture? Not too much moisture. Okay, have a little bit more. Okay, that was too much moisture. I'm really sorry about that. Okay. And then I'm just like treating zits all the time. It's, it's awesome. This actually, I, I will say, oils aren't the answer alone. And it's actually, there's some still in here. I should use that up. But the pump, I think, stopped reaching it. But either way, this is from a brand called Little Barn Apothecary. My sister knows these people, the owners of the company out there in Atlanta. And they have the Little Barn actual shop in Atlanta. And she goes there around Christmas time every year and just loads up on stuff for me because they have such great ingredients. So this is the Honeysuckle and Grapefruit Body Oil, Organic Sesame Oil, Virgin Organic Avocado Oil, and Italian Honeysuckle. And this is really lovely. It is so nice. And I'm actually going to set this aside because I need to actually finish using that. I don't know why it got thrown in my empties. It is so lovely. But at the same time, like I said, an oil alone isn't the answer. I use the Midnight Honey from, ooh, I'm not gonna remember the name of that brand, Far Pharmacy? Uh, but that was in an empties a little while ago. And I liked that one too. I may yet repurchase that one, but it's like I have to do lotion and then oil. I can't just do an oil because otherwise it just like sits on top of my skin. It's kind of like the Texas sand. When it rains, it all just like flushes off because it's not in a place where it's ready to absorb the water. And so we like flood really easily. That's how I feel about putting oil directly on my super dry legs. It just sits there. <laughs> Another product from Little Barn Apothecary. This one actually is not quite empty, but again, the straw has stopped reaching it. So I'm kind of, you know, just pounding it out. So these will be done probably within the next week or so. But this is a more recent gift from my sister around last Christmas. And this is the Orange and Clove comforting body lotion. I talked about it in my vlog, the way that right now, especially just in my the gloomy, foggy mornings, I'm kind of re-channeling that like dreary energy into maybe it's fall, <laughs> like burning pumpkin candles and looking at Halloween tumblers and just burying myself in escapism. This is really helping. It smells so good. Oh, it smells so good. I mean, really, orange and clove might not be your thing, but it has a very wonderful, bright, but also autumnal, deep notes kind of thing going on. Without being musky, I'm not a musky kind of person as far as fragrances are concerned. Like the whole Abercrombie smell, the Hollister smell, like no thank you. This is still light. And it's an interesting formula. We have aloe, lavender oil, coconut oil, shea butter, Xanthan gum, jojoba oil, avocado oil, orange oil, clove oil. Don't put this on your face. But I have found that I really like how this absorbs really quickly. I think that it is still kind of a, a summer weight moisturizer, but it does absorb really quickly. So if I want to do more layers of it, I, I might. And it doesn't actually bother my skin in any way, which I really appreciate. So I could see myself repurchasing this and I know that they have a lot of different scents. Okay, one last body care item. Oh, oh. Ew, that's expired. So this is the Falane Organic Rose Body Butter, Shea Butter Argan Oil and Moroccan Rose. Their rose line is so lovely, but I mean, the expiration on this, this has been sitting in my empties for a while because obviously this is a very small container. This doesn't have an expiration on it. I'm not sure if this one is meant to be sold individually. Either way, it doesn't smell like rose anymore. It did smell like rose and it is super, super lovely. The only thing is it's whipped and so because it's whipped, there's really not as much in this container as you think. It's really, really nice, but like you go through it so fast because it's kind of like, have you ever bought like a tub of whipped cream cheese? And you're like, yeah, oh, oh, there's like really like two servings in here. I don't know how you guys consume cream cheese, but it's two servings for me. So I made my husband start buying the blocks of cream cheese for me because yeah, it's basically like that tub of whipped cream cheese where it's just super disappointing because there's just not that much in there. Okay more conditioner all over my hands. Here we have two of the very famous items on my channel, I guess. Proteiny polypeptide cream, something that deeply troubles me here. And I know that, you know, we're not alone in this. A lot of companies do this, so it's not that Drunk Elephant needs to be blamed. And I do have a TerraCycle box. Obviously I can recycle these, but this is such a complex little system to have an airless pump that even though these are empty, they weigh a ton. There's just a lot of technology in this packaging. I just could argue they could do something a little bit better. I'm not sure, but it does, they feel full. And like, that's really, really strange to me. But anyway, yeah, it probably takes me about, 
I don't know, three or four months to work my way through one of these. And I use the lotion pretty liberally, but yeah, I, I do. I continue to be absolutely obsessed and addicted to this stuff. So <sighs> them's the breaks, kid. Oh, two of these. And honestly, this is a representation of like exponentially more of them. It's just the fact that they get tossed aside or they get stuck in car crevices or things like that. My husband and I go through the GlossierBalm.com at an amazing clip, an astonishing rate. We love this stuff. He is the king of chapped lips. And now he always smells like cake batter, which I think is hilarious because it's the only one that's glittery and it's the one that he tends to go for. I don't know why. It's very, very cute. Uh, but yeah, these are these are dead and uh, they, they served us well. Obviously they've been rolling around in a lot of things to rub all of the iridescence off of the packaging and everything. But yeah, there are dozens more of these in our house. I order them every time I think about it and we do, we use them absolutely to death, me and my husband. Ooh, oh, pfft, there's another one in here too. There's the coconutbalm.com. I think this is my first one ever. Oh my gosh, the coconut's my favorite. Ooh, sunscreens. So we have two sunscreens that I actually finished here. I've finished many of these in the past, but this is the most recent one. This is the Sunday Seashells Daily Sunscreen. SPF 30, broad spectrum, blah, blah, blah. I do love this. It is zinc oxide, 18.9%. However, you know, they ran out of stock for so long, like so long, that I just ended up trying other stuff. I moved on, you know? So while I still really enjoy this and I think it's a great sunscreen, I'm probably not gonna repurchase it because I've already found other ones that I like just because they stemmed the supply forever and I just wasn't willing to be patient. The other one that I have here is the Kopari Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Water Resistant for 40 minutes. That's what it is. It's not actually, oh, Sundays, mineral sun. No, that's funny. Okay. Yeah. Hallie was the one that brought that to my attention. It is the Sundays spelled exactly the same way as the Sunday seashells. So thought that that was a little interesting. So I have really loved this. I have really, really loved this. However, it doesn't work on me in the summertime. It will ruin. And I want to say summertime. I mean, it's spring in Austin, but it's summer already. This doesn't work especially under makeup when it's hot outside, period, end of story. And I technically have dry skin. I have been getting a little bit oilier lately just from the weather change and everything like that. But this, I will not be repurchasing anytime soon until I really need something that's as oily and as emollient as this, because I do believe that it is, gosh, I think, you know, one of the first ingredients in it, which is not on here, it's on the package, is coconut oil and so i just don't have time for it right now it's just too too much and it makes my makeup run all over the place all right home stretch here guys we got three more one we talked about this recently this is the ceo vitamin c brightening serum from sunday riley while i love this and i think that it is such a beautiful product and it does beautiful things for my skin i am not sure that it's the vitamin c that's doing it i still need to be convinced i'm still just not sure how i feel about vitamin c in general and its efficacy as like a brightener as much as brands want it to be that and i kind of feel like any sunday rally product is going to give me that sunday rally glow it's just what it does so i might you know try more sunday rally products i want to try ice we talked about that in my will i buy it Definitely want to try that. So that might be the next Sunday Rally product that I try. But I used to be like a huge Sunday Rally devotee. But the Good Jeans has lemongrass oil in it, something that now very much irritates my skin. Even though I used to use it, things change, I guess. And uh, I used to like Tidal a lot as well, but I found moisturizers that I like better than that. But I don't know, I'd be willing to go back. I didn't go into Sunday Riley for a long time because I didn't consider them clean, but it's like now I would definitely be willing to, you know, go back and try some Sunday Riley. You might've noticed there's not really much makeup in here. So there's only actually, I should point this out. One thing that's technically empty is, I mean, I, I should, it's not empty empty, but I'm savoring it because I don't think that the replacement pans ship until May. This is the Salt New York contour cream. And it's so good. And it's the first thing that I've panned in ages. So it's worth mentioning. The other empty here is the Lash Food Eyelash Enhancer. You guys may or may not have watched my five month results video after testing this against just regular old castor oil on my eyelashes. And I saw absolutely no difference between the two. So no, I will definitely not be repurchasing this like $78 natural lash serum. And finally, absolutely, one of my favorite things that I've discovered in the past year, Kosas just keeps knocking it out of the park. Some products I don't 
necessarily wear. You know, they have gorgeous lipsticks, but you guys know I'm not a lipstick person. I still have two of them because I just can't get rid of them because they're so beautiful and they sent them to me. But at the same time, that's pretty much the only reason I don't use a Kosas product is because it's just not something that I would typically wear. Mm, the 10 second eyeshadow, didn't really love that one, but everything else is just so, so beautiful. And this is so much more than it looks like. And it should be she is pricey. They have been doing a lot of sales recently though. I picked up some blushes when it was the $20, uh, $20 sale. Typically they're 34 and they were on sale for $20. I posted it on my community tab. I was very, very grateful to the viewer who told me about that. But this is the Kosas Wet Lip Oil. I didn't have to pay for this. I got this with points on, or coins I guess you would say, super coins, on Super Great, which is an app that I use here and there <laughs> to review products and you get coins in return for doing so and for people watching them and then you get to redeem them for prizes. This was sold out. It was not available anywhere and I got it for free through Super Great and that was the reason that I went for it and I have used her all the way up. It is just kind of like backwash muck at this point and yes, I have already repurchased this, repurchased this with my own coin because it is just that flipping good. And you know a product is good when I buy it for my sister for Christmas because I know that she doesn't have time for like some crazy, crazy routine. And if I am adding something to her routine, it needs to be something that I can promise results with. And this year I bought her the OC red algae mask and it changed her life. And then I also got her, I got her a different shade. I got her the kind of like rosier shade because she has a deeper skin tone than I do than just the clear, but I got her this and she's also like, Oh yeah, <laughs> so good. Oh great, I just tried to wipe my hand and I wiped my hand on conditioner. I need to just deep clean this entire situation, but this was an excellent start in doing so. This is kicking off my deep clean because I can now, with the exception of the few things that I found that like technically aren't finished yet, this will be about, you know, another week or so. For the most part, I can just recycle all of these things and that makes me feel so cleansed in my brain. And we're gonna do a favorites I have a huge favorites plant, like a huge favorites. It's gonna be a giveaway. It's gonna be a lot. Definitely tune in for that, but then we're gonna do the foundation roundup and then we're gonna start clearing some stuff out. So I'm really, really excited about the content kind of like going into the end of March and into April and everything. My birthday's April 4th. I'm so excited, you guys. I always love my birthday. Even though I'm quarantined, I'm still pumped about my birthday. I'm pumped about Aries season. I'm still feeling all the good vibes. It's fine. So yeah, guys, look forward to those videos. I hope you enjoyed this. I always love hanging out and watching an empties video. So I hope that you do too. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. I go sometimes a few days without uploading. Sometimes I upload two days in a row, three days in a row. Make sure you ring that little bell so that you know, because it's kind of all over the place. It's how, however often I can do it and still maintain my sanity. So definitely get those notifications so you don't miss anything. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so, 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 so much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.